Good morning. Good morning. There we go. So my story starts with these two. These are my kids. And we were hiking in the woods when my daughter noticed this plastic tub of cat litter sitting in a creek. And she looked at me and said, Daddy, that doesn't go there. And it was this eye-opening moment for me. And when she said that, it reminded me of when I was a kid. I used to go to summer camp. And on the morning of visiting day, just before they'd let our anxious parents come barreling through the gates, the camp director would say, quick, everybody, go pick up five pieces of litter. So you get a couple hundred kids. We're each picking up five pieces. And within a few minutes, the camp was spotless. And I thought, why not apply that crowdsourced cleanup model to the entire planet? The next thing that happened was a little weird. I took a photograph of this cigarette butt using Instagram. Then I took another photo, and another photo, and another photo, and I noticed two things happening to me. The first was litter became artistic and therefore approachable. The bottle cap that was on the ground that I used to walk over or never notice suddenly became a really interesting photo opportunity. The second thing I noticed was that at the end of a week, I had taken 50, 60 photographs, and I had picked up every single piece that I shot. And I realized that the same way we measure the steps we walk, I was measuring the positive impact I was having on the planet. So I started telling people what I was doing, and others started participating. And one day, this photo showed up from China. And this was the moment that I realized there was a group of people coming together, a community, all focused on the same greater good, cleaning the planet. We know about the problems of today. We've all heard the stories of the environment being degraded, plastic pollution in the ocean, bird life, wildlife, marine life getting killed. We probably hear a little bit less about the economic impact of litter. In the US alone, it costs $11 billion every year just to clean it up. The state of California spends $500 million every year just to clean the waterways. But there's good news. There's a tidal wave of change that's coming now. There is a sense of civic and corporate responsibility that is coming to the forefront. There's a sense of urgency, a sense of urgency to change now. And billions of people are suddenly empowered to make a difference. We like to say that it doesn't matter if you're a student or a scientist, whether you live in Paris or Philadelphia, there's a community for everyone. I'd like to introduce you to Literati. We are a community that is crowdsourced cleaning the planet, one piece at a time, and through that process, creating a global database of litter. It happens with the simplicity of a photograph. We like to say that a picture tells a thousand stories. So the minute you snap a photograph, we can understand who picked up what, where, and when. And we use artificial intelligence to extract really important information from each photograph that our community takes. It starts with the object, the material, and the brand. And we use that information to work with cities to make a difference, so they understand what's lying on their streets, their playgrounds, their beaches, and in the ocean. All of it comes together in a really simple yet sophisticated tool an iOS or Android app that anybody can download today. And we provide all that data to you in a dashboard. We have this interesting theory that every city in the world has a unique litter fingerprint. So I want to tell you the story of San Francisco. San Francisco had a fascinating question. They wanted to understand what percentage of litter came from cigarettes. This is a look a data generated from the San Francisco community. We started analyzing it, pulling out the objects. Cigarettes made up 53% of what was found. 
Then we looked at the material, plastic, the dominant one, because every cigarette has the plastic in the filter. And you can see all of the other materials. And then there are thousands of brands that we're able to identify with artificial intelligence. We gave that city the, the data to the city, and that data generates $4 million a year in annual tax revenue for the city to clean itself up because they apply all that data to creating a tax on cigarette sales. Just by understanding what we're all walking over every day. Let me give you another one that's happening right now in the Netherlands. The Dutch literati community, some of whom are here, started picking up connector balls. If you're not familiar with them, and I wasn't, they're a small golf ball sized plastic firework. They blow up and plastic fragments go all over the Netherlands. The Dutch community has picked up 50,000 of them, but they didn't stop there. They took the data and went to the leading retailer, a store called Albert Heijn in the Netherlands, who looked at the data and said, that's it, we're done selling them. And they banned the sale of Kinetter balls simply because the Dutch community preside, provided this data. And as a result of that, several other retailers did the same. We've started working with a number of commercial partners, brands, NGOs, cities, schools. These are just a few of them. And so when we think about what it takes to actually create a litter-free city, we have a very simple roadmap, and it looks like this. It starts by mobilizing people, giving cities the ability to engage their citizens. Those individuals collect data, which we provide the analytics on top of, the insight and intelligence, the patterns. That empowers a city to make decisions, to actually be smarter and more strategic about what they do with their resources, and then we're able to monitor. And we go round and round that circle. And that is the path to eradicating litter in a city. It starts with the transparency, the truth, the data of what's on the ground. The Literati community started because of two little kids in Northern California. And today, we're in 165 countries. I hope you'll join us. Thanks.